Welcome to Fleming Film Talk with me, Robbie Fleming, and joining me as always is Justin Doyle, JD, the view master himself. Hey, Justin. What up, Rob? How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. I kind of uh, missed you. Uh, I kind of missed you last week. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was working on set all week, and you know, by the time I get off, you're sleeping, and then... Uh... By the time I go to bed, you're waking up, so it's yeah. tough to make things work. But we're making yeah. it work today. Exactly, and I did do a video with Cody for the Facebook group, so... Uh... Yeah, awesome. Yes, yes, the Fleming Awards uh, group is kind of getting to the stage I wanted it to go in, and if you guys are watching, you can join and be a member of it for free. We don't offer any... Higher, higher tier, everybody who is a member is free and they have all the rights as everybody else. Fantastic. Yes, and Justin's a fellow moderator on the group, so he's always uh, so he's always giving suggestions as well. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Uh, what are we talking about today, JD? Today we are talking about well, what's been going on. Anything recently? Uh, they've out? announced that a trailer for the Hunger Games prequel came out. That's where mm, I came that's to right. this. Yeah, we're doing our top five favorite prequels. Wait, These are it's very annoying because I do just want to state this. My favorite prequel of all time is a video game called Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that was a huge, huge game. Did you play it? I we did, but I gotta tell you, I don't really care to just like sit around and like sleep and then go ride on a horse and stuff. I really just want to like kill people, you know, <laughs> like more just the normal GTA like, kind of guy. Well, more. I don't even care for that really. I like um, like modern or uh, yeah, like modern warfare, Call of Duty. Um, uh, we're, I'm excited to play the new Jedi game. We're going to get that one. Nice. Um, you know, just kind of like first person shooter stuff, you know, I'm more, uncharted. I'm more of an open world kind of, uh, kind of gamer. Just takes a long time. I like to, you know, that's why I don't like uh, TV shows, I guess, is because they draw them out so long and you have to, the movie gets right down to it with two and a half hours. I don't know. With Game of Thrones, four you hours, get all that into one movie. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a big, big, long movie. But yeah, we're talking prequels today. This is uh, movies that come out in sort of a franchise and uh, start from even before what we knew. Yes. So, yeah. Usually, it, like, I see some uh, places here that are just putting the first movie of a franchise in as a prequel, and it's like, no. I think it mostly would be something that came out later in the franchise that tells a different story yes. or yes. or an earlier minded. story. You know, actually, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, or have you seen it yet? Yes, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, yes, loved it. It's my favorite film yeah. the years later. It has, uh, it has some prequel stuff to it because we learn about yes, more yes. Learn I chose not to count The Godfather Part 2 because, one, it was on my sequels list. And two, it's more of a mm -hmm. sequel than a prequel. It's very similar to Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Yeah, it is considered uh, on everyone's list. It's considered a sequel, though. So, um, I mean, a prequel, a prequel. So, uh, it, it can go either way. It is a sequel because it came out second. But uh, I see both ends of the, of the argument. But it is yes. not on my list either unfortunately yes yes uh so you can go first with your number five okay great uh so there's a, a movie that's coming out soon that is a part of a big franchise and so i started re-watching uh the ones that have come out before and it turns out that the way that the storyline goes is in the Fast and Furious universe, yes. Fast and Furious and Fast Five and uh, Fast and Furious Six are all prequels to Tokyo Drift, which is insane. Like I, I never knew that going along with the storyline. 
And so of those three, I do have to say uh, Fast Five is the most entertaining, but the best one overall, to me, in my opinion, is Fast and Furious. So that is my number five. It is a prequel to Tokyo Drift, which is the third installment in the uh, Fast and Furious franchise. Uh, but this is I chose this one because it's before things start to get too superhero to all over the place, like, yeah, freaking right. How there's no way you would survive such a thing. Uh, it still has, you know, heart before family becomes the only heart to them, to the movies. Um, I just, uh, I just really enjoyed it on the rewatch. And then, you know, also Justin Lin is at the helm who, uh, has, um, directed, you know, a good chunk of them yeah you know it stars vin diesel and we still have a great paul walker in there alive and well uh jordana brewster and michelle rodriguez but but you forget Um, one thing just in this franchise did uh live breathe and live and breathe with paul walker and i feel like this franchise is missing him the most we do miss him a lot and as we you know i'm uh, we just watched furious seven so it's the one where you know that was his last film um it really was it's still sad it's still sad to watch you know um he really was the real the heart and soul of of the, he's like the the one that he's our through line throughout the entire yes, movies you yes, know? he yes, was the one yes. who we were attached to in the yes. first one yes. we rooted for him and then you know now we keep rooting for him and he just happens to be with you know vin diesel and michelle rodriguez and han and what 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 whatnot but um yeah uh this franchise gets a little insane and crazy uh fast and furious is is insane you know with um with michelle rodriguez leaping across and then vin diesel catching her and then he lands safely on a car like (laughs) (laughs) goes out the window uh, when i watch yeah no i I know, but uh, that's one of the reasons why I have this movie at number five for me is because it, it's, you know, it's not as intense and crazy and over the top as it, it starts to get and becomes because if you've it's seen just Fast Nine. Missing the Rock. Yeah, The Rock does add some stuff to it, but uh, I I, uh, I think it still really works really well. And it's, it's one of my tops on the rewatch for sure. So Fast and Furious yeah. is my number five. Which is the fourth installment? Yes, but yes, it, a prequel yes. to Tokyo Drift. Yes. So you okay, to- uh, <laughs> it's got a six point five on IMDb. Uh, budget of eighty five million, worldwide gross three hundred sixty million. Definitely our money makers here. Over on Rotten Tomatoes, twenty nine percent with a sixty seven percent audience score. Nice. I need to go back and watch it, it. to rate it, but I'll look and see what that box makes it as well. Okay, cool. I I don't mind this this one. It is one of my. uh, It's not one of the ones I would go to first. Normally, like five onwards to five to. I think Hobbs and Shaw's that's one I really enjoyed. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Because I love the, um, the chemistry between the um, 2.9. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. Uh, right, you ready, you um, ready for my number five? What's your number five? Uh, so, you, you know, uh, do you know a filmmaker called Kevin Smith? No, I don't think I've heard of him. Yes, of course. I love him. <laughs> so he has his own universe featuring these two side characters called Jay and Silent Bob. The first movie, they were in Clerks, and the second movie they're in was set the day before Clerks, and it's more rats. Yeah, good pick. I went on a big kick of uh, of the Kevin Smith's movies that have um, Jay and Silent Bob in them, preparing for Clerks 3 that came out last year. Yes, that, yes they're the only uh, good movies he makes, the ones of uh, Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah, Tusk wasn't bad, but it's, it, it's un, I mean, it's, 
Ugh, it's disturbing. Yeah, I yeah I can tell Justin Long probably makes that movie. Yeah, he's good. He's very good. So more rats is just about these the day and the life of these people who hang out in the mall. Yeah. Uh, and Basically yeah, kind of t- takes place in a day. Uh, yeah. it, you know, there's it's a typical indoor mall, and you got um, uh, they're setting up for an event that's going to happen later on, and um, you know, just their their wackiness ensues. Definitely, definitely. And the best thing about this movie is the antics Jay and Silent Bob get up to because they really do some Looney Tunes kind of stuff with this. Yeah. Uh, it has uh, Shannon Doherty in it, who is yes. a 1 0 fame. Jason Lee, who then became famous for uh, the Uncle. What was his show that my he name, had? My name is Earl. I love that. My show. name is Earl, yeah. Uncle Earl. Uh, ben Affleck. Also, Ethan Suppley, who is in My Name is Earl as well. Yes, he, he yes, he's the best one in that show. He's a brilliant actor. He was also in the the recent movie to win the Fleming Award for Best Film, Babylon. The he was oh. Toby Maguire's like right hand man. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, he's lost a lot of weight since uh, My Name mm. is Earl. He's like a bodybuilder mm. now. Yeah, shows anybody can do it. Yeah. Uh, also, Joey uh, Lauren La- Adams, La- who was Lauren Adams from Big Daddy. She's a good actress. Who, yeah, but also goes on in Chasing Amy with Ben Affleck as well. Stan yeah. Lee. Yep, Stan Lee, and of Nicole. course the, the two that make this movie, Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes. Yeah, Jane, Simon, Bob. And speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Michael Rooker is in this movie too. Is the cop? He's Claire Forland's dad. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, the movie is just wacky. I mean, it's just, you know, yes. it's... Uh, there's like, ga- you know, feces gags and stuff like that. I mean, it's just all... But I guess this is what happened with with Kevin Smith, right? He would just, this is what he would do in, in Boston and with his friends. So, uh, but it's a great pick. It's a cult classic for sure. Definitely, definitely. Because uh, Clerks is, has more of a different tone where it's kind of a comedic drama, whereas More Rats goes all out with the comedy. And I think that's yeah. what suits Kevin Smith. I know he had this potential at the time to be this new Scorsese, but I don't think that was never, ever going to be the road for him. No, he has his niche and he sticks to it. Yeah. But, which is fine. It's totally cool. I mean, it works. He's very popular. It's, it's, it's made him a millionaire. Uh-huh. Uh, speaking of, budget of $8 million, uh, worldwide gross, so only $2.1 million. That's why it's the cult classic is it came, it became popular afterwards. Oh, whereas Clerks literally was really popular for an indie movie at that time. Mm. 7.0 on IMDb, 58% on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, but the audience score gives it 82. Nice. And uh, Letterboxd gives it 3.3, and I'm going to give four stars. That seems better. All right, my number four for movies that are prequels um, is the most uh, recent on my list. Movie came out just last year, and it's a sequel to a movie that also came out just last year. I'm talking about Pearl. Pearl Ooh. is a fantastic. Ooh, I have not had a chance to see this to see this one yet, so. Tell me all about it. Well, if you've seen X, it's uh, Maya Goth, uh, directed by uh, Ty West, and she goes to to this uh, farm with her friends, and they make like pornos. <laughs> uh, but there's the this odd couple that lives the, in the farmhouse, like near them, and uh, you know some murders ensue. And this movie Pearl that came out last year as well 
is this the prequel to that and my god is back and she um lives in that house same house from before but now and we get to learn about more people in the town that of this of this place and uh she is in theory the woman that that was the old lady x and it tells that story uh but since you haven't seen it i don't want to say much more but it's very very horror you know thriller gory uh but it's just beautiful it looks it's very like, like you know, more that, version of wizard of oz Okay, uh, yes, a very hard R Wizard of Oz. Uh, but it is, um, it's just beautiful. And I just love it. You know, X was really dingy and brown and dirty and Pearl is really clean and crisp and, and colorful. And I just love the, uh, you know, the opposite of, of these movies. And again, Pearl came second, but, uh, you know, just seem like it, it people are loving it just as much as x uh, if pearl came first who knows if x would be better um but anyway uh fantastic stuff pearl is my number four lovely what are the ratings for it i also want to see if we know anybody else in this uh um, really... i want to see maxime and that's out because there's a lot of actors i like in that yeah, that see they're doing the that would be a part of a trilogy there. Already, yes. it's insane. Uh, gross of nine million point four. Uh, doesn't have a budget because it filmed with X back to back. Seven point zero on IMDb, and Rotten Tomatoes gives Pearl ninety two percent with an eighty two percent audience score. She's so good. My God, this uh, uh, three point nine on Letterbox. So I'm, uh, I'm guessing it's, uh, well, yep. The only person I know in this cast is Mia Goth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, X has more notable people. Um, yeah. But, well, Jenna Ortega is my favorite in that one. Yeah, yeah. Probably the most popular out of all of them now. At the moment. All right, what's your nice. number four? My well, number four is the the fifth movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This takes place in World War Two and follows the story of Captain America, the first Avenger. So this story is the origins of Mr. Steve Rogers, who becomes Captain America in an experiment and goes on to fight in World War II alongside his uh, crew of rebel uh, soldiers to help him uh, take down the Red Skull. We have uh, Hugo <laughs> Weaving, who kills it as the the villain um we also have tommy lee jones in in here i keep forgetting he's been in the mcu a lot of people in this movie i forget has been in the mcu stanley tucci amazing actor very R richard armitage who i think will be on a film on your list hmm i don't know who that is richard armitage let me see. Uh, I need a he was in Ocean's name. 8. He was in a certain uh, franchise. Let me look it up. Go ahead. Keep talking. So, yes. Um, who else in this movie? Hayley Atwell. This was the first time I saw Hayley Atwell. <laughs> That's funny. I know who he is now. Yeah, Hayley Atwell. Uh -huh. Yes. Really out well. Um, an actor I've met, uh, David Bradley, who was in Pinocchio. Um, he's in the Harry Potter series. He's quite a well-known actor in the UK. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, to Toby Jones. Toby Jones, he's Sebastian Stan. Sebastian Stan. Neil Muck, the one from Walking Tall. Sam Jackson. Sam Jackson. What's his name? The guy from uh, Walking Tall, Neil McDonough. Uh huh, Neil McDonough. 
Yes. Yeah, and he's good. There's JJ Field, who also played one of his uh oh and Kenneth Choi. Gotta say to me the weakest in the uh three of the Captain Americas. It is it is the weakest. But maybe the out of the three that are you know, out of the trilogies that are out there in the Marvel universe, maybe one of the better three. I think I think Guardians takes that uh, crown now. Well, two isn't fantastic. Two isn't fantastic, but it's still not great. As, not as like Winter Soldier. Yeah, then, but, I don't yeah, know yeah, if Guardians yeah, three. Yeah, but yeah, but Kurt Russell makes Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, and. Uh, Robert Redford makes uh, the Winter Soldier, so they have a classic actor to steal the show. Yeah, but they don't make the movie. <laughs> Everyone else around them make the movie. They're just in it. Well. it like, they kind of like have the spotlight when it's on them. Well, I mean, you can't deny their but acting ability. Like, yeah. Yeah, but it's only really like Angela Bassett that's really been like noticed for it. Well, I don't – there's no way I think Robert Redford or Michael Douglas or uh, – who 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 is the dad again? Oh. Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Russell deserve any sort of nomination for their performance. If there's no. one person that deserves for supporting actor, I would say Jeff Bridges for Iron Man. Um, maybe uh, Sam Rockwell for Iron Man 2. Um but it's there's no way that the other ones they're just like kind of throwaways, you know. They're not they're not meaty. Maybe Michael Douglas is a little meaty, yeah. but I don't, I don't about, know if it's about to say it's only Angela and the dad from Zhang Chi who are actually been kind of like like really like stand up performers in Marvel movies as a as well as Robert Downey Jr. in Endgame. I don't hey, the best yeah. performances I've seen in the MCU. He's so good. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, but yeah. Chris Evans is great as Captain America. He's better mm-hmm. as Captain America than the Human Torch. The rest of the yeah. characters are great playing their roles. It helps expand the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it sets up the Avengers. Apparently, if you're Captain America, you know how to fight in other movies that have nothing to do with Marvel because in Ghosted, he was able to beat people up the same way that he beat up. Uh, people in event i think he threw something <laughs> that, that was uh, similar to a shield uh yeah. i don't know why they did that but um anyways i guess from now on he's just gonna be a guy who can beat up people he's um good, yeah 140 million dollar budget worldwide gross 370.5 6.9 on imdb 80 percent on rotten tomatoes with a 75 percent audience score um 3.3 on that, and I give it a rating of four and a half stars. That's a good one. Speaking of good ones, I'm not going to talk about it too much because ugh, I'm exhausted talking about it. But uh, uh, another one of the earlier uh, movies on this list is one of my top movies from last year. It's uh, a prequel to the Predator universe, and it's Prey. I Which just is number eight so on, my, on my full list. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. Amber Mid-Thunder is the She's star of this great. movie, and she is the one who's trying to take down Predator. Predator comes to uh, her sort of uh, in, uh, encampment, like her colony, I guess, and... Uh, you know, because this takes place um, in the Comanche Nation. Uh, Predator lands on Earth and takes out not really people, but predators, other predators that are on the land. Um, we even see a really, really cool fight with the bear. Um, not really fight, I guess, but uh, yeah. Just great action, unique styling. Um, for for it being sort of sci-fi part, it's it doesn't it doesn't feel too CGI, too over the top. It's it's really well grounded and really well performed. Yes, um, yes. 
I have and, I have uh, thoughts on this movie as well. So once you finish uh, talking, I want to say some things about this film. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, I mean it's also thrilling because she, she gets herself in the situations that are like death. You know, she's gonna die, and uh, you just really feel for the situation for her. And great performance and great movie. Prey is my number three. Yes, and I like this movie as well because I really like the story to it. The concept mm -hmm. that they take, oh, let's put the Predator anywhere. And it works for this concept in, is it Native America? It's Comanche. Yeah, Native American. Yes, yes. And I really like this strong female character who actually feels like a character who's written as a character because i really like this how 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 the start she's not a she's not a confident hunter but then she becomes a confident hunter to defeat the predator yeah it's and pretty awesome and, she, and, and she didn't and she didn't need and she didn't need a love interest to side along the story she just got on with it yeah i think it pa passes the Bechtel test Yes, definitely. It passes the uh, test. It's a great film. Go check it out. It's on Hulu or Bulu. Yes, Disney Plus in the UK. Uh, it doesn't have, let me see, box office was a budget of $65 million, but it was sold to Hulu uh, during during. It pandemic, didn't get so. a premiere or a festival run? I don't think so. So it's certainly a TV movie? Well, it's during pandemic times, these TV movies are, are actual movies, you know, yeah. like if it goes to a streaming service and not like, uh, you know, then it technically it's, it's a release because that's how they're counting, uh, whether it's, um, whether it's good or not, you know, whether yeah. it's uh, worthy of a movie, the, uh, I release. Ne I wish Netflix would make movies like Hulu do. Yeah, I mean, they make a lot of movies, for sure. I wonder if this did have, like, a weak theatrical run somewhere. It would have been good to see it. It's it. I, last I heard, it got nominated for an Emmy. Oh, okay. Then uh, maybe not. 93% on Rotten Tomatoes, 73% audience score, and 7.1 on IMDb. It's 3.6 on letterbox and a 4.5 it honestly god really surprised me this movie did i didn't think it was going to be as good yeah. as it as it was and i really want to see a it sequel takes a lot of and, and i want to see a predator film set in japan now okay to send the bloke from a uh, job work bullet train avengers and game the poor guy the Japanese dude. He was an army yeah. of the dead as well. Yeah, he, he'd be he'd he's be the main character. Oh, okay. Well, it sounds like you should just write it. That sounds great. Yes, yes. See, he he would be a guy I would consider for a lifetime achievement award. Dang. Okay. Yeah, if you guys don't know, Rob put out the Lifetime Achievement Award for the 2021-22 season of the Fleming Awards, and it went to... Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. What's your favorite yes. Willem Dafoe movie? It's a, toss, it's a tie between Platoon and Spider-Man. Mm, good ones. Yeah, Spider-Man's great. Um, I'd have to say recently I really enjoyed him in the Florida Project, one of his better performances. But I think his best performance is The Lighthouse. Uh, oh, that's good. Uh, Nightmare Alley, of course, is a great movie, but he's not necessarily like a main character. Fantastic Mr. Fox, the voices, um, which I love a lot. I'm it's going to be an asteroid. Yeah, Finding Nemo. Uh, he's going to be an asteroid city. Uh, he was great in that Eternity's Gate. I think he was nominated there. And then, uh, of course, The Northman was a great Do you know another movie Northman. he's really good in? What's that? The English Patient. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And The Aviator. He had a small role in that, and he was brilliant. 
Did anybody see Togo, the Disney movie about the dog with Willem Dafoe? I don't know. Um, Great Budapest Hotel, of course, and then uh, coming up, he will be in Nosferatu as well. And uh, who you okay, most- you're number three. Moss movies oh. as well. He was what? He's in a he's he's in two your you Latin Moss uh, movies coming out. One's called Poor Things, and the other one's called And. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, yes, but off track, my number three was Cody's favorite. Uh, when we did the fur, when we did the uh, when we did the third <laughs> film in the franchise, and it's the good, the bad, the ugly. This story is, I mm. think it's it set during the Civil War, so I think it must be set before the events of A Fistful of Dollars. That's how I always imagine the movie. So you can start off with this one and then watch A Fistful of Dollars, or you can watch Fistful of Dollars and a few dollars more and then watch Good, Bad, the Ugly. You should always watch the movies how they are intended, which is by release. Yes. Um, tell us about the movie. So this uh, is about uh, three men, Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cleef, and Eli Wallace. And they are in search of stolen gold during the Civil War. I have not seen this movie directed by Sergio Leone. Oh, it just Top. won! It just it just won the nineteen sixty six uh, Fleming Award. Uh, we did so. You'll need to add that one to the list of uh, Fleming Award uh, winning films you've not seen. Well, I'm sure. Yeah, um, I'm sure because it was a super popular movie. Top yes. rated movie number ten on IMDb. Number ten. Yes. Yes. I don't think it's what it it would be in my top ten. Because I prefer a couple of the yeah. only movies. My favorite one of this uh, trilogy is A Fist Full of Dollars. Nice. Yeah, I, I need to see the. I know my dad had them on when I was a kid and never sat down and watched them because I just thought they were boring. But as an adult, I might like them, so I should give them a chance. Exactly. Um, yeah, Clint Eastwood, of course. Big, big superstar. And that time did all the yeah. westerns. You probably know Eli Wallace as a nice man from the holiday. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've definitely seen him before. Yeah, do you know the nice old man in the holiday who uh who becomes quite friendly with Kate Winslet? His name is Arthur. Yes, yes, he's Arthur. <laughs> <clears throat> um let's see anything else anything else let's see in the 90s no no have you seen mystic, R- mystic river i've seen mystic river he's in that he's in the two jakes i haven't seen it though i need to see the wall street movies oh wall street yeah 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 and wall, street, wall street money never seen yeah yeah, I want to see that one to carry Mulligan. That was like his last movie. Yeah. Hey, you should check that one out. Uh, good pick, number three. 97% equally on uh, Rotten Tomatoes for The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. Uh, the critics and the fans love it equally. Over on IMDb, 8.8. Boy, oh boy. That's a big one. Uh, box office of 1.2 million, or the budget was 1.2 million. Worldwide gross 25.2. That's a that's a big steal there. And 4.4 on letterbox, and then I give it 4.5. Sounds like you guys are ingredients. Okay, this number two for me is a. Uh, Part probably one of my uh, I don't know I can't say favorite franchises but definitely I really enjoyed the first three, and then what can beat it? Well, if you're gonna have 
the first three be awesome. I mean, you got to have the next movie be equally as great. And this movie for sure was. I love X-Men and X2. And I even enjoyed uh, X-Men The Last Stand. But when you come out with a whole new set of rules because now it's in the past and we get to see everyone as they're younger and you came out with X-Men First Class. That is, on my list. Movie. that is on my list. Yeah. There's no reason why it shouldn't be. It's a fantastic film. We get great actors like Fassbender, yes. McAvoy, yes. Lawrence, definitely Kevin definitely. Bacon as a as a villain, yeah, Rose Byrne, definitely. And when it's on my list, we'll have a proper chat about it. Yeah, Nicholas Holt, Zoe Kravitz, Oliver Platts, January yes. Jones, um, yeah, just great. Matthew Vaughn directed, and uh, yeah, we'll talk more about it later. But X Men First Class is my number two, and battled it out but you know with these other movies because prey is a top movie from last year like uh, nor but no i can rewatch x-men first class right now and be so happy about it understandably all right well then let's talk about your number two right so last year i rewatched uh the prequel trilogy of uh Star Wars. And the first movie is fine. It's fine. I don't get all the hate for it. The movie is fine the way it is. The second is one of my least favorite Star Wars films. I think this one was was literally like the worst Star Wars film ever made. But the third movie is my number two. Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Good one. Um, I like every, I like everything about this movie apart from the dialogue. <laughs> That's funny. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, these three movies were sort of written for your children almost. Um, apart and... from this one, which felt like it, it grew with its audience, like Harry Potter did. Yeah, this yeah, this one came around, um, but I think that's how it was supposed to start. Is like you know, it starts off as sort of kiddish, really kiddish, and then kind of got boring in the middle with um, sort of telling more story that we didn't really care about, and then got to like the meat of it all, and then you know, things happen. Like we see who became what when it came when it comes to the Star Wars originals. Yes, um, yes, because but, we get to uh, see. We get to see what happened to uh, Palpatine, how he rose to be emperor, and Ian McDermott gives the best performance uh, in this uh, movie. I've met people who know him very well, and I've heard he's a great guy, and I can see why he's a great Please, guy. Palpatine. Yes, Palpatine. Yes. Yes, I met some people yeah. who were quite close with him. Nice. Natalie yep. Portman, Hayden Christensen, yep. Ewan McGregor, yep. Samuel McGregor, L. Jackson, Samuel L. Jackson, Christopher Lee, Frank Oz is uh, Yoda, Anthony Daniels, C three PO. Uh, yeah, directed by George Lucas, of course, who directed and the first uh, Peter Mayhew returns after years as Chewbacca. Yeah, uh, I don't think there was bigger movie uh, franchise uh, than the Swan. Is the Gene, Star Wars? Bill Legerton appears as Uncle Owen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's some flaws. There's some flaws, but it's um, it's, it's definitely we have the better of the Jimmy three. Smiths. Jimmy Smiths. He's one of the best in this uh, trilogy. Right. Right. Um, and there's General Grievous, who I thought was awesome at the time because he was a robot with four lightsabers. Yeah, that was really cool. Uh, but the thing that makes this movie is, movie is is the epic lightsaber fight. 
yeah, it, the action in this is stellar. The uh, CGI is great. Um, got nominated for best uh, makeup though. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. And so, of like, like visual effects, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a great film. Uh, I mean, you know, it's great for a Star Wars entry. Yeah. A lot of a lot of people and from the generation rate this as a favorite in the franchise. In the franchise, yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, we all know mine. But it's a uh, huge it's movie. Bad. Budget of 113 million. Budget of 113 million. Worldwide gross 868.3 million dollars. It's because they keep releasing them in theaters. 7.6 on IMDb. 79% on Rotten Tomatoes with a 66% audience score. Lairbox rates it at 3.7. I rate it at 4.5. Very nice. Yes, this is my third favorite of the Star Wars franchise. Mm. Mm -mm. Okay. What's my number, number one? one was a surprise to me. Because I didn't know that it was a prequel. I thought it was the start of a whole new franchise. But it wasn't. It was a prequel. So when this movie came out uh, in uh, the early, I guess, mid-2000s, I was not ready to enjoy it. Because I didn't think it was possible for you to have a short, blonde bond. But Daniel Craig's Casino Royale is a prequel to Die Another Day, which was the movie uh, movies that Pierce Brosnan was in. So that is why Casino Royale is my number one prequel movie. Yes, yes. And good choice, good choice, good choice. It's fantastic. I mean, one of the best entries into a franchise you can have. Um, you know, there's some that that hit later on, but uh, this is this one was was stellar. Um, but yeah, you, you go got, into uh, these Craig. like movies thinking he's the same guy the whole time. Does I always look at Craig's run being its own franchise? Well, no, that's what I, that's what it became. You know, is that it was Daniel Craig's own because he he doesn't look like the old Bonds. You know, it's not like he can be him because he doesn't look anything like him. Uh, at least there was like a vision and a look that they had when they kept changing them until Pierce Brosnan. But um, yeah, uh, Eva Green as Vesper was so sexy. Daniel Craig is fantastic. Judy Dench, of course, was in the 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 Pierce Brosnan era, so that does make sense why it could be a sequel in that universe. Uh, Jeffrey Wright, Mads Mikkelsen, is there a better villain than Mads Mikkelsen? I don't think so. Um, just it, it changed the game of 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 Bond because yes. it's hand to hand combat. It's hard hitting. It's it's parkour. You know, uh, it still has the drinking, the the ladies and the cars, but and the gadgets. But it just became more grounded and more like you know, like he could die, uh, and, and, and threatening. Uh, and I just thought it was a really, really well done movie. Um, and I didn't know that it was a prequel, but doing my research found out that it was, and I had to be on my list and then going through all the movies that I love that are prequels, this definitely tops it. Um, Daniel Craig started a great franchise. Number one was going to be uh, Des Desolation of Smaug. I know it's, it's an honorable don't mention in the, in the top 10, but yeah. Um, no, I had. Uh, uh, I also was thinking of Solo being in there too, but I, I I like these other ones more. But yeah, close close one was De Desolation of Smaug. But yeah, great great action film, great film overall. Uh, and uh, yeah, eight point oh on IMDb. Um, 150 million dollar budget, 616.5 worldwide. 
and uh, um, this is this is could also be a remake, or it is a remake. Ninety four percent Rotten Tomato and ninety percent audience score. So everyone's loving Casino Royale. Yes, yes, I do enjoy this movie. Yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely one of the better Daniel Craig movies. It's weird it goes. Good movie, bad movie, good movie, bad movie, good movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, good franchise overall, though. Gave us some good yeah. stuff. Yeah, and I don't think uh, Spectre was bad for the record. It just had a few nitpicks. Yeah. He became unstoppable. Yes. I do. What, one thing I do love about this movie is the opening theme because it's uh, Chris yes. Cornell and this is the best Wonder song. Agreed. 100% agreed. I wish they'd get more rock stars. I would love Muse to do a Bond theme. Or Hell Bond. yeah. Well, Muse, Muse um, did uh, the Twilight, so, some Twilight songs because. Um, uh, the writer was a fan. Yeah. Yeah, they 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 got they they got Radiohead uh, to do the opening for Spectre, but then they changed it to Sam Smith because uh, they were more popular. No, like it. It's one of the worst ones. I know. I know. It's it's terrible. And I actually don't like No Time to Die either. You're not big on No Time to Die? I don't like Billie Eilish. No, I'm not a big fan of her. I mean, she's great. Like, I love her story and where she came from, but that music is damn depressing. Bad guy isn't depressing. It's fun. That's her only fun well, song. Exactly. She, she, she tricked us. <laughs> yeah. She's like, this is how it's going to be. And then it never is ever again. <laughs> yeah, you, you're right. You're, you're literally right. Never again. No time to die is, my God, is it boring. When it came on the radio, I turned it off immediately. I don't think I've ever heard it all the way through. Apart from in the middle. Well, maybe. Um, all right. Well, we know what your number one is, so let's talk about it. You go ahead and say it, and then you talk about it twice. Well, my number one is X-Men First Class, because uh, I was doing my research, and I was listing every pre I was looking at every prequel, and this was the one I thought was the best one out of them all, because it feels like its own the start of its own franchise. It doesn't feel like an X-Men movie and what an X-Men film it gives us. It shows us that it shows us the friendship between Charles and Eric. This thing that they've uh, always hinted on in the in the movies that they've been these friends they've always like had their conflicts separate them and this is the start of how they grow it during this great friendship but have this conflict kind of divide their friendship yeah uh and the cast and look at the cast it is an iconic cast james mcavoy amazing actor yeah michael fassbender one of the best actors working today rose byrne a really good actress. Well, not really working, not really working today. But yeah, he's he's. I wish he would work more. I want to see him, Academy you know, Award annually. winning actress Jennifer Lawrence. Yep. All right, January Jones kind of disappear, disappeared, and Oliver Platt yeah. fine, but Kevin Bacon. Well, I love he he's I love just, Oliver Platt. He is just amazing at playing villains. And this is the best villain he plays. Some uh, uh, Nick Nicholas Holt again. He is also a really big actor working today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Same with Zoe Kravitz. She's a big actress working yes, today. Yes, I was it in terms of Zoe Kravitz. Oh, another good uh, good uh, actor I like, Caleb Landry Jones. I think Michael Fassbender is, you know, and I guess Jennifer Lawrence are the most solid out of this cast. I mean, just just undeniable talent. What ever happened to Lucas Till? Who's that? He's the one that played the one that had the thing at his chest, uh, Cyclops, his brother. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, Jason Fleming. He died Jason in, Fleming in... from Lockstock and Snatch is in this. Yeah, uh, it's great. It's just, it was. It just gave us X Men all over again in a younger form, and, and we got to see different ways of unique murder. <laughs> and also, there is a, there uh, is a brilliant cameo in this movie from a regular of this franchise. Yeah, it says one word, and it's the or two words. It's the best two words ever. Yes. Uh, and somebody that that we will be seeing seeing soon uh yeah it's just so so good i mean and then i, I you know now that spawned a whole new sort of way of doing the x-men movies because they crossed universes and they had we have you know new and old together in some of these movies um dark phoenix was probably the, the biggest flop and when and before that was apocalypse like we just really didn't like those um we but days of future past movies, don't we yeah we love deadpool days of future past could have been mine like it's it's pretty much a tie because that movie's great as well like i i think yeah. Days of future past yeah. is so much fun um gives us gives us you know an x-men first class we have to have sort of uh sort of you know grab we have to put our feet on the ground and really get a muddy in story and then it, they yeah. get muddy in in action in uh yeah. days of future Pepper and Pepper. i would say the best movie out of this franchise is logan uh that's a great yeah i think people would say that and then uh if you count deadpool yeah so it makes sense why oh, yeah, were, that's why they might be in a movie together at some point yeah well it's not a secret yeah uh fantastic yeah great pick great list uh x-men first class is uh it takes place in the 60s by the way you know this is the the prequel part to it uh 7.7 .7 on imdb uh budget of 160 million dollars worldwide gross 352.6 over on Rotten Tomatoes is 86% with an 87% uh, audience score. 3.6 on uh, Letterboxd, and I rate it a five star. Boom. Yes, yes. There you go. I, I've, been say, I've been saying to – I prefer the X-Men movies to the MCU. Oh, I'm the same. I do too. I do too for sure. Well, glad I'm not the only one who thinks that. <clears throat> No, no, no. There's a lot. There's less of them, so that that helps. Uh, some also rans uh, almost made the list. Uh, Red Dragon. That's a yep. great uh, prequel. Desolation of Schmaug, The Hobbit. Desolation of Schmaug. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, Solo, a Star Wars story. I also had Koala. Yep, that's a good one. Bumblebee. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It's Minions bad. Arise oh. agree. Huh? Minions Arise agree. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Wonder Woman. Yeah, I mean, it's a prequel to Justice League. Well, more so, about Justice was... League, man, I'd say, because Justice League came out afterwards. What did you say? I said uh, it's more of a prequel to batman versus superman because justice league came out afterwards oh okay yeah uh another one i uh re uh when i was prepping for my friend's uh 
I was vo I'm, vo I'm voicing a character in uh, my mate's movie, so I watched uh, Monsters University. Yeah, that's good. Uh, it's not fantastic, but Oz the Great and Powerful. Yeah, um, it's my least favorite of the franchise, but I still think it, it's a good movie. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Yeah, yeah. Um, good action and has The Rock, the Scorpion King. Yes, I've uh, been to, the to watch that one. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Uh, perfect. Um, any uh, movie recommendation for I the week? I do, actually, and it's not Guardians of the Galaxy because everybody's People. going to be watching that one. So People I'm going to recommend... Yeah. People now. Yes, so I'm going to recommend a small-time British indie movie called the unlikely pilgrimage of Harold Fry. Oh, yeah. Tell us about it. Uh, yes, this is uh, Harold Fry is played by legendary character actor Jim Broadbent. And he finds out his uh, his old uh, friend is dying of can cancer and, and he wants to, to uh, go and see her before she dies. And he lives in Devon, which is the south of England. And his friend uh, lives in Betwick upon T uh, Tweed in the north of England, uh, like the town just before Scotland. Uh -huh. And Devon is like the far, far south. Yeah. He decides to walk from Devon okay. to, to his uh, dying friend. Okay. The only other actor you liked is, it. Yes, I really liked it, and I recommend uh, it to you to you guys when it comes out in the US. Might be another year, but you have to check it out. Okay, I'm excited for it. Yes, the only other act, the only other performer you'll know is Penelope Wilton. Uh huh. She was in, yes, you'll leave now one from Shaun of the Dead or Match Point. You'll know her from one of those two movies. She plays Simon Pegg's mum in Shaun of the Dead. I like, uh, I like Match Point. Yeah, she's, she's Brian Cox's wife in that movie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what's your uh, cool. recommendation? Well, I think since I saw you last, what did we do? What was the last thing we did? Do you remember? We did Hook. It was Hook. Okay. Uh, so I've seen Peter Pan and Wendy since then. Have you seen it? Uh, yes, I did. I didn't hate, hate it. I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. I had a great time with it. I enjoyed it so much. So that's my recommendation. I got so much crap on Facebook. It's like one of my most popular videos for some reason. And, uh, uh, but also for, for me saying I loved it and people are saying it was, you know, shit. And I disagree. I had a great time. I mean, did, if you enjoyed X-Men first class by seeing Charles and, um, and, uh, uh, the other character name, uh, be friends before Justin that's Justin. what that's what we get here we got yeah we got sorry, friends before Justin, enemies here Justin you 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 throw you throw you so you have to continue I am continuing so anyway um if you you liked X-Men first class you, know, you get to see enemies friends first well that's what you get here you get to see them they were friends Hook and Peter were friends before what a great touching story like that that meant so much to me and we people are you know up in arms about that and it's like who cares this is the whole like peter pan doesn't have to be by the book every single time like if we got a shot for shot remake of the cartoon everyone would be up in arms about it but this is a different sort of way of of telling the story and it was very very enjoyable um i do have to say i didn't really care for the kid who played peter 
or for the girl who played Wendy, but I really enjoyed everybody else. Like, I think all the, the Lost Boys and girls were cool. Jim Gaffigan was great. Jude Law was fantastic. Uh, question, do you think the actor with Down Syndrome was good as the Lost Boy? I, you know, I, I've, I, yes. I've worked with, uh, you know, Down Syndrome uh, uh, children on sets before, and it, it is, um, it's different, right? Uh, you sort of, you know, have to make sure that uh, uh, you give them time and, and, and hopefully they, you know, remember lines and stuff, but you're there to help them, right? And yeah. I think it was a perfect start. Like, he was, seemed like he was getting comfortable into his character. Yes. And, and I thought it was great that this is the first Down Syndrome player to yes. Disney's hired, and it should be more of it because they're... Yes. they're, they're, yes. they're I still like think you, the best uh, the best one I've seen is the lad from The Irish Goodbye, the short film. Yeah, absolutely. He was really, really good. Um, but I think it was great. I thought he was great. Everyone was fantastic. Uh, I don't know why people are hating him, but it's also the same director as The Green Knight, like David Lowry. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. Come on, guys. He, he had a vision, and you know, it's I've gonna always be a wanted wonky. to see the old man and the gun with him. Yeah, it's good. I mean, again, it's just his version of whatever we've seen before, and that's kind of what he gave us here. Is is his version of this movie? Uh, he gave us old man and the gun is his version of Robert Redford movies. Uh, uh, the Green Knight is his version of Knights at the Round Table. You know, like. He just yeah. gives us his version, and I really, really enjoyed yes. it. I don't and know he's always he's trying it. new experimental takes on the subject, like he does with the Green Knight. Exactly. Great production design, good magic, yeah. good fun. A black uh, Tinkerbell. Like, yes. people she are was hating good. that Disney's getting woke. No, 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 no. It should have been like this all along, okay? Yeah. We should have had everyone universally can be – a character in a movie. Well, yeah. they do that with Shakespeare plays, and they've been doing that for since before me and you were born. Right. There you go. All right. Enough about that. Yes. Cool. What are we doing next week? Uh, next week, I thought because uh, uh, the Cannes Film Festival is starting, uh, our top five Palm Door winners. Okay. Let's check out this list and see uh, past. Well, the recent um, winner was one of your favorite films from last yes. year. And the, and the year uh, before that was one of my favorite films of 2021. Um, Titan. Yes. Yes. Uh, they didn't have a 2021 because of COVID, but Parasite was the year before that. Uh, Shoplifters, which I loved, was the year before that. The Square, which is directed that's, by Ruben Austin, who, who did Triangle of Sadness. Um, a more that was nominated. Ooh, Fahrenheit 9-11. Wow. Elephant, no way. Uh, the Pianist. Okay, so there's some yeah. movies in there that Pulp Fiction. Yeah. <laughs> Barton Fink, Wild at Heart, Sex Lies and Videotape. Okay, so it does. We got some stuff to work with oh, here. Apocalypse. Well, now. Wild at Heart's one have been recommended by by a friend. Uh, I'm gonna try and check that one out. Okay, the very first one uh, awarded as a Grand Prix went to ten movies. Wow. Okay. Cool. I'm in. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We'll do that then. Uh, until then, uh, check me out at Worth of View Movies and all the things. Posting fun stuff over at TikTok. Uh, definitely stuff coming out daily. So go check me out at Worth of View Movies and all the things. Nice, nice. You can check uh, my Facebook group out, the uh, Fleming Film Awards. Uh, we're currently taking a break from the 60s and we're doing the 2020. One to twenty twenty two because so I missed a lot of movies from yeah. that period. So I thought using what I did uh, for the twenty twenty two to twenty three one, try and do a similar one. Yeah, great. Yeah, and uh, were you happy with any of the nominees, uh, Justin? 
I was happy with a lot. You know, it's I sometimes I just wish that it came out the way you know it should have before because you know then we'd kind of see where it would be going. Your awards thing, but um, no, uh, it's fun, yeah, yeah. So I have to leave out Belfast because I nominated it before, so then it was yeah. more fair um, to let other films have a chance, yeah. Nightmare Alley. Some tell me stuff. I'm excited. Yes. And uh, you're announcing the winners on Thursday. Yes, yes. And you're going to help me out. I'll definitely be there. Awesome. Cool. Tell us your guys' favorite prequels down below. I'm sure Godfather Part 2 will pop up a lot. Yeah. Like, subscribe, comment. Yeah. Tell us other topics you want us to talk about. And uh, we appreciate you guys viewing. And. Um, let us know. Uh, or, or even or, if they're just know. listening while they're doing the washing up. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Enjoy that. Thank you for listening while you're washing up. Yeah. And we appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Until then. Until then. Bye, Justin. Later, Rob. Bye, guys. Bye-bye, everyone.